there, this is Melissa Wokolo, and in this session of Number One Sales Plan, we narrow down why we need voice lessons. Hello there, Kelly. Hi, Monica, Patricia, Ricardo, Rama, Eric, Juanita. Awesome. All right, everyone. Perfect. Hello, Camille and Jerry. All right, I just dropped in the chat um, our new Facebook group. Um, I have some really great things that are up tonight. So I really want you to come into that Facebook group um, because on November 1st through the 5th, I'm having a free um, Kickstarter challenge as well as this. So I would love for you to be a part of it. Um, it does not cost anything. Um, and we're going to be up and rolling at 2 p.m. every November 1st through the 5th. And I definitely want you to be there. Great. As you're coming in, yes, please, please, please drop your um, and go ahead and join. All right, a little bit about me. My name is Melissa Wokolo. I have come from the transportation industry since 1999. Um, you, you came into this program either because you've been in the program in round one or two, and now you are doing round three. Um, so really quick, I do want to share my screen and just share a little bit about um, how, where do we find our homework and how do we stay organized as we go through this program. So if you come over here, I'm going to share my screen. Um, you're going to go to the my library <clears throat> and then you're going to come down to number one sales plan and trucking and logistics. And you're going to go to the announcements page. Immediately after I have this meeting, you will see week number three, um, and then you'll have in brackets the replay. When you open it up, I'm just going to open up week two, um, you'll be able to see, click here for the replay, and then also the itinerary that we now use. So if you click on that itinerary, you're going to see that we, we have it in order. We have week one, um, and then week two. And then you'll have week three, which we are now working on right here, which is week number three. Perfect. <clears throat> so I came into transportation because I it fell into my lap, to be honest with you. And um, when I was doing it, it, it was because someone called me and I spoke fluent Spanish. I went to Mexico. Um, and from there, I helped as a 3PL for an automotive company. And then I came back to the US um, and moved up the ranks, went into overdimensional working for a company here in Fort Wayne. And then I opened up my own freight broker agency in 2006. Um, and I was there for 13 years. In June of 2020, I decided to get out of the game. Um, now I do coaching, I help with my family businesses and I help do sales for three other companies. So that is a little bit about me. And I am a mother of four girls um, and I have two grandsons. Um, other than that, I have a beautiful husband, beautiful life, um, love my church family. Um, so that's a little bit about me. So week number one, everyone, have you done all the homework? If you have it, it's not too late. We're not that far behind. Um, so right here is week number one. Um, have you decided what your sales plan is? For example, how often are you going to contact your clients? And do you have a address book, a customer relationship management tool? I gave a couple, um, I'm using Apollo, even though close is my go-to for coaching and for my dispatch business. I love close. I am going to try out Apollo. Um, it has been a learning curve, but I'm trying right? Having to watch a lot of YouTube videos to get it done, but I am trying to use it. So um, I do like um, it so far. All the potential leads must be called on and our objectives. So to, the idea is to get 250 leads into your CRM, um, input your leads into your CRM and get ready for next week number two. 
We also talked about memorizing your sales steps, understanding what the difference between potential, interested, qualified customer and bad fit. Why do we do that? You don't have to use my sales steps. You can use any sales steps you want. However, keeping an organized CRM, keeping an organized CRM will be super important as you go through the weeks. If you're not organized, you will fail. And we want to be organized. We want to know how do we find which ones are interested. Interested means that we have a traffic manager name. We need to have 150 in that interested um, section. How, how many of you know at a, at a moment's notice what is interested? The ones that you are now building relationships with. Do you all know that? If you do, you're on the right track and I give you a clap and say, great job, I'm so excited for you. And then our goal is to get them into qualified because qualified means they've given us a quote. And then our next goal is to get them to become a customer. Um, and then obviously bad fit means that they just aren't the right customer for us or they just don't wanna use us as a broker. Week number two, we were talking about last week how to set up our marketing plan. We're gonna talk a little bit about a USP today um, and who are we gonna to sell to? Our homework was, we need to set up a domain for our email. If we do not set up our domain for an email, we need to warm up our email box um, and make sure that we don't send out more than 50 emails a day. Otherwise your domain can be shut down. Mine almost got shut down because I accidentally sent like 600 emails accidentally this week. And I'm like, oh, I told my, my, my number one salespeople not to do it. And then I ended up doing it. Oh, it was scary. It was scary. So if you are going to send out more than 50 emails a day, I would recommend getting a new domain. Um, that way you don't have any problems and connect it to your normal domain. Um, and how you do that, I mean, there's a lot of people out there. GoDaddy can help you. If you have GoDaddy or Google domains can help you. Um, and all you do is do a redirect to your normal domain. All right. Um, warm up your 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 email box for two weeks. That is why we are going to have our Kickstarter um, challenge group where we can now drop our homework um, and also get each other's email addresses and it's in a safe place um, where everybody's at. So um, there's only 43 of us that are in the program right now that I, if from last time it was 43. So we can all now, you know, keep, be networking together what everyone's doing. So craft your email signature. We spoke about it in week number two that you don't want to have um, any kind of, for the first couple of emails that you send to a client, you don't want to land in their spam folder. So make sure your email signature does not have any links or pictures, et cetera, inside of your email signature. Start writing your first liners for your 250 leads. Um, I did start in here and write my first liners. So um, I have my 250 leads in here and I'm gonna start writing my first liners. I am in the process of doing that. So we're gonna continue to do that this week as well. So for those that are coming into the room, everyone say where you're from and say hello to everyone. We're just going over a recap of week one and two. Um, and that was last week, our homework to get those 250 first liners. For those who do not know what a first liner is, it's where you grab information using the client's social media, their LinkedIn page, or something about the company that you can now um, connect the dots. So for example, if the company just opened up a facility in Jolly, Illinois, you can say, hey, I just saw that you opened up a facility in Jolly, Illinois. How wonderful that's going to be for that community. Great job. No wonder um, people want to work at your, your company, work at um, Menards, for example, and then go into your spiel. All right, everyone, week number three, week number three. Um, just come on in, everyone. You're ready for a brand new week. I'm ready for a brand new week. And this week in week number three, um, we will be starting next week to do cold calling together. And so week number three is kind of going to be a beautiful moment. Why? Because 
as I'm going through this week and next week, we will, I am going to record my phone calls. Everybody that I have on my list are brand new, meaning that I've never worked with any of these companies. So just like you, we're going to start from ground zero and we're going to be heroes. And so today we're going to talk about doing some voice lessons. Um, our voice has a lot to do with whether or not we get a response. And so I want us to be able to practice a lot. We need to engage our prospects with a clear and precise voice. If we call and we say, uh, 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 um, um, and we are not confident, most likely we're not going to get what we want to achieve, which is a relationship with that client. First impressions are important, so you have to practice a lot. One of my favorite things that I have, and my husband even used it today, which is called online voice recorder. It's free. You hit this little red button and you can record your sales call. I want us to be doing that just so that we can now help each other within our Facebook group. Now, if you do not want to share your client, no big deal. You can use, you know, cut out that part, whatever, you know, just record a portion of what you're speaking to um, and then drop it in there. I really highly doubt, um, sorry, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Um, I really highly doubt that it's going to be someone running after a client. But if you want to keep your client disclosed, then just only record the part where you're speaking your USP. Okay. Um, that way we can all learn. I'm going to be dropping some of my sales calls as well into the, into the Kickstarter Facebook group that we just built for us. All right. Back to where we were. You want to emphasize your words, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a script down here. Um, so we need to be quick and to the point when we're talking, very quick and to the point. I remember when I first started doing sales, I would go on and on and on and on and on. And I want you to learn how to trust yourself take your time, pause, and stop talking. It is hard to stop talking because when we're nervous, we want to keep on talking. And when we're nervous, we want to keep on talking. So I want us to just take our time, say what we have to say, pause, and then stop talking. So I want everyone to say, stop talking. Just stop talking. That's all you have to do is just stop talking. We need to be quick and to the point and then stop talking. Develop a trust in your voice. Develop a trust in your voice. And what does that mean to trust your voice? Um, a few months back, it was probably about almost a year now, I was coaching a young lady who has a very um, aggressive voice. My mom is just like that too. My mom has a very aggressive voice. She actually sounds like a guy sometimes on the phone, um, but she's definitely a female. Um, but she sounds abrasive or um, her voice just, her voice does not sound like friendly. And so we have to practice on our voice and how we practice. A lot of times what I will do is I will walk outside, I'll do sales, I'll put my earbuds in and I will have a list of numbers and I'll be walking um, with my headset while I'm making phone calls. Are y'all there now? So when that's happening and your voice isn't getting the perspective that you want with your client, you just wanna you know, say what you have to say and stop talking, but it takes a while to get your voice in a place where it sounds very friendly and not too high pitch because sometimes when we are nervous or we're not comfortable in the situation, our voice goes up a notch and the person on the other side, they can feel that. 
And so this week, we're going to practice a lot with our family and our friends, as well as with each other on how we can now speak those things um, that will sound like that they've been our best friend forever. We have to appear friendly with our voice. And so here are some voice tips that's going to really help you stand up when you're on the phone and have a headset and use body language. So use your headset and use your whole body because if you're standing up and your shoulders are back, you're dressed to, to the hilt, meaning that you're dressed not in your pajamas, but you're, I, I work in my pajamas. I wish I could show you right now. Um, so, but when I'm doing these cold calls, I do want to get dressed. I want to feel confident. I want to make sure um, some of us can get by with it without having to get dressed, but some of us need to, you know, stand up and feel good about ourselves. So that way we can come across on the phone um, that we, we believe in what we're saying, right? And knowing your pitch, knowing exactly what your USP is. So you need to memorize it. You should be able to really quickly within 30 seconds, say your USP and that's your pitch, okay? Your unique selling proposition which is USP, is your pitch. You need to know it. You need to memorize it. You should say it off the bat, all right? Um, so what is our the USP that I am now going to talk that you need to memorize? If You can memorize it any way you want, but tonight's homework is I want you to drop your pitch in your sales corridor. Um, and so it says, hello, I work with shippers with finding trucks for their shipments. Is this a good time to get your email address to keep in contact then stop talking again hello i work with hello i work with shippers and finding trucks for their ship no that's not how you do it we have to pause listen to what the other person is saying and mimic their voice so if their voice is really rushed we want to be rushed if their voice is calm we want to be calm if their voice is a little bit loud then we need to be loud. We need to mimic their voice. So it's kind of like we're in the same heartbeat, so to speak, like ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. So it's important that you hear the other person. So if the person says, hello, this is US Steel, I would say, hello, I work with shippers and finding trucks for their shipments. Is this a good time to get the email address to keep in contact? This is after you've been transferred from the gatekeeper to the traffic manager. So the first thing you're going to ask for is the traffic manager name. And then from there, when they transfer you, you say, hello, George, I work with shippers with finding trucks for their shipments. Now, now listen, how do you sound friendly? How do you sound like that they're your friend? Let me show you. Let me use my voice. Ready? So it says, hello, hello. No, you say it. Hello, George. How are you? Uh, you know, this is Melissa over at Sun, and I, I just work with shippers to find trucks. Is this a good time to get your email address? I'd love to keep in contact with you. Do you see how my voice sounded like I know him? Hello, this is Melissa. Wanted just to see about getting some trucks for your shipments. Is this a good time to get your email address? Then you stop talking. Wait for him. If you're friendly, all you want to do is get his email address because then, then you can set them up on their sales plan, right? Perfect. <clears throat> Change our mental game. If we don't feel good today and we don't feel like making a phone call, how can you get out of your mental ugh? Say, how do I get out of my mental ugh? Everyone in the, in the chat, share with me ways that you can get out, how you get out of your mental ugh, that just that place where you just don't want to do it. How do you get out of that, right? Because our objective is to be able to make 50 phone calls or more every single day so we can get through this. How do we get through it? What, where's a way that you can get out of your mental ugh, right? How do you get out of it? Um, talk to like your friend, Exactly. We're going to talk like a friend. Um, one of the ways I get out of my ugh, I just don't like it, is I, I pick something I really like to eat. Um, I go for a walk. I practice a lot. 
So I know exactly what I'm going to say and I keep on practicing it. I don't mentally practice it. I say it out loud with my friends and family. That's how I got over that. When I first started, I'm a very much an introvert. Um, and so I had to practice and practice and practice and practice. So drop down in the chat. What are the ways that you get out of that yucky feeling? You know, that just that, that gross feeling of making the, that dreadful feeling that gets out of, yeah, motivational speakers, play some good music. Antoine says, watch a YouTube video. Jaquisha says, look or think about my daughter. Exactly. Rama says, practice. Camille says, I get ice cream. I like that one, Camille. Get ice cream. Exactly. Um, do not use fancy words like high-pitched sales voice. Try not to use those words, right? Um, let me give you a, a, a backstory of that. I don't like to tell backstories a lot because we have to now, you know, stay focused on our work. Um, but one of the things that... I remember the very first time that I was in Mexico City and I was about ready to sell a big client. And my boss looked at me and says, no matter what you say, I want you to look him in the eye. And even if you don't know whether we can do it, as long as your gut feels that we can do it, just say it and we'll figure it out. So <laughs> I remember sitting across the table from the contacts that were about ready to give us a, a big contract for an automotive vendor in Mexico, Pueblo, Mexico. And as I was trying to think in Spanish and translate in Spanish, right? Um, they asked me a very important question on whether or not we could drop trailers. And my gut said, go for it. I didn't know if we could drop trailers or not, but I, I ended up looking them in the eye remain calm, had my hands in front of me. And no matter what, I was telling my body, relax, relax. And my only time I've ever done face to face was in Mexico. I've never done it in the US. I had a client for over 10 years, 11 years that I'd never seen face to face. And we would do approximately two to 3 million in sales every year. And I did not know this person face to face. So I known them since 2003 or so, and I didn't meet him till 2013, I think. Um, and look, all this time, they were surprised. The owners, everyone that was in the meeting, the traffic manager, the account managers, they're like, you never, you never met George before? I said, I've never met George before. Never met him before. You know a relationship is a good one when you've never met the person, yet they trust you immensely. So how can you emulate that trust is by emulating and appearing with your voice and developing a trust with your voice. Understanding your vocal ton tonality, like the tone of your voice, can you mimic it? Because the tone and the body language, your body language makes up for 80% of your clothes. So when you're asking yourself, why am I making all these phone calls and I'm not getting anywhere? The first place I would look is myself. I wouldn't look on whether or not the new sale, this sales program is working. I wouldn't look at like, is this coach the person I should be you know, following? Or what she says is working or is not working. It worked for me. It worked for me to build a book of business to well over 10 million in sales in, in seven or eight years. So how did I do that if I did not have the experience, right? There's two things I did. One, consistency. I, I was a bulldog. Are you hearing me say it? I'm a bulldog. I, I don't want to call yourself a bulldog, but I was, I was a lioness. I was an Amazon. Whatever word you want to use that's going to describe you. I want you to describe you in the chat right now. Describe yourself because that's going to be your word. Your word is I want you to put it on a paper in front of your desk. I, I want you to have it somewhere when you're doing those sales calls. Somewhere when you're walking in your office, 
even if it's a home office that you can see that says, I'm an Amazon, I'm a lioness, I'm a lion. I, 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 I got this. Whatever it is that you can look at, you want to understand that you have to have confidence and confident comes from knowing exactly your pitch, knowing exactly your rebuttals, knowing exactly what is going to be said. All right. So this week, as I'm dropping things in the chat, every rebuttal, we're going to have list of rebuttals. So if you get a rebuttal or I get a rebuttal between this week and next week, we're going to try, we're going to try to get 50 phone calls. Now, if you say cold calling is not my game, if cold calling is not your game, I want you to at least try it. I want you to try it for at least a week, five days before you say no. I want you just to try it because even if you sell using a cold email or sell by using an email first, you're eventually going to have to follow up and close a deal with your voice. So wouldn't you rather just get it done and over with? Wouldn't you rather get that situation done and over with so now you can get back to the game? Realize that this is a mental game and realize that transportation and logistics and brokerage, freight brokerage is just a game. I don't say it's a game, but it's in the numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. What gets measured gets managed. It's in the numbers. The more phone calls you make, the more contacts you make, the more you reach out, the more you're going to get things done. Why is it that one person can, can make phone calls? For those that are agents, Wolf of the Wall Street. There you go. I like that movie. So Jaquisha says, I'm a lioness. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yes. So what happens when you're making those phone calls? And you're not getting anywhere, but maybe one of your colleagues or maybe somebody in a group or maybe some of you know is getting quotes already. How, what is the difference? It's their tone of voice. It's their confidence. It's their level of confidence. You have to practice. The only way that you can get as good as someone else is if you practice because they brought something to the table. They may not have been freight brokers before, but they may have been in inventory and sales. They may have, you know, sold washing machines for a living. They may have done telemarketing when they were a teenager. They may have done car, been a car salesman. They may have done something that prepared them for their future and you didn't. So how do you get that preparation? The only way you can get that preparation is to constantly, constantly, constantly build yourself. Stop using fancy words. Have you ever heard that? I'm going to tell you really quick. I was last year, I had a young girl that has years and years in sales, so to speak. And I'm kind of like the street gal of sales, meaning that I have no upper education. You all know that. And this young lady said to me on the phone, the reason why I'm going to do better and transportation than you is because of my vocabulary. I'm gonna get a better client than you. I said, I hope you do. I wasn't upset. Don't take it that way, okay? I wasn't upset. And the reason why is because she said you're not articulate. There's a there's articulation. You can use the word you can articulate with Ben, how, who, truck. That's articulating. Using fancy words is not going to make you sound smarter. It's actually going to work against you, especially in a realm where the person you need to get to just wants you to get to the point. Do not use high, use fancy words. I've never used them, okay? And I did very well for myself. I can only give you what I have had. Um, and don't use a high pitched sales voice. Don't say, hello, how are you doing today? When we want to sound super friendly, we go high in our pitch. And if we do that, we're going to sound, we're going to sound very fake, right? We're going to sound very, very fake. 
So don't do that. Don't go into that high pitch sales voice. And then just drop the sales voice altogether. You can say, hey, Antoine. Yes, I, I hear that you're now the new transportation manager. Wow, that's great news. Congratulations. How did you know that? You were stalking them on LinkedIn. Not really stalking them, but you saw that he just a few months before became a the transportation manager. Get his email. That's how you do it. You go into the conversation. You go into the email already knowing a little bit about them. Oh, it looks like you just opened up your Jolla, Illinois facility. Great. Are you looking to bring in more capacity, more trucks into that facility? And again, I said about mimicking their tone, really getting into their tone. Who cares if they say no? Who cares? Can you overcome no? You must at one point, if you have a partner, you must at one point, a husband or wife, you have a must one point, a boyfriend or girlfriend, one point overcame that no. You, how many no's did you get? How many broken hearts did you get till you finally got that yes? How do you do it? You keep on going. Don't let your voice reflect your disappointment. If you go on to that next phone call, reflecting that disappointment, reflecting the way that you feel, reflecting the fact that your bond is coming up in about two months and you really need to get money into the company. If you are bringing all that to that phone call, how, how, do, you, how do you do it? Number one, I remember my grandma telling me, I, was, I, I came downstairs after being cold calling for five weeks straight. I came down the stairs. I asked, told my grandma, I was crying up a storm, acting like a fool. When I say I was acting like a fool, the whole house was like on hellfire. I mean, I was just acting up. Came downstairs, asked, told grandma, I can't do this anymore. My friends told me I needed to beg for my job back. I, I'm calling and calling. I'm tired of calling. I'm just so tired. And I said it in words that were not friendly words. I did not look like a Christian right there. I looked like a total mad woman. My grandma looked me straight in the face, sitting in her chair, didn't even have to get up, used her voice and told me to get my ass back upstairs to my two by two room and make those phone calls. I cried all the way upstairs. I sat at my desk. I could hear my kids playing outside in their little makeshift um, blow up. You can read about the blog. It's on my website. If you go to my website, you can see the blog about it, about this story. And this moment in my life where I had to make a change, I had to stop and quit feeling sorry for myself and just do the work, just trust the process because I didn't have much hope. I'd already given everything. My grandma took out her $200 loan, which is all we had. I had ran up back then in 2006. They didn't have voice over IP like they do now where you can get a phone line for 40 something bucks. I had to use. Verizon, which was for every minute I was on the phone, I was racking up dollars. Okay. Cause that's the way it was back then. I didn't have a computer. I had to call off list out of phone books of the yellow pages. And I kept on calling and I kept on calling and I kept on calling and I kept on calling. The first, the first time that I got my sale was out of desperation. How desperate are you really? Because for me, I was living off of meals and wheels and we only had like two meals left in the freezer. My kids were outside playing in the water in the makeshift, you know, <laughs> duct tape to keep the, the little blow up pool. The reason they were outside is because my oldest daughter was, I think about 11 or 12 at the time. And she knew that we didn't have heat in our house. Thank goodness it was summertime, even though I'm from Indiana, you know, it was summertime. And so she washed them outside because they're getting their bath. It was four, a little after four in the afternoon. And I tear up every single day thinking about what if I would have just called my friends? What if I would have listened to my friends and I would have just picked up the phone and called 
call my old boss back. How much do you really want this? How much did I really want this? Like I said, I, I got my first sale. I got 10 loads over the course of five more week, five more days over the course of a week. I got, I got 10 loads and they were off of a load list. That means the customer would send out a load list. I had to post them and I had to call and make outbound phone calls, but at least I got something and I lived off that load list. It was Triad Metals out of Neville Island, Pennsylvania. I lived off that load list for a good, uh, but I got smart because he would, I would take the load so the other brokers couldn't get them. Um, and I had to believe in myself I was gonna cover them. Um, but I did, I covered them. I covered them and I won. I said to myself, if I made $50,000 in a, in a month, which would put me at, you know, 40% because I, I got 60% of that 50,000, um, that would make me $30,000 a month that I would retire. I mean, I literally, you know, I would just, you know, move loads and be fine. I did that in my first year and a half. Um, I was doing that 30,000 and I was stagnant for a really long time because I had a lot of, uh, we don't need to go there, but we'll talk about that a different day. Because I was very controlling in my business, but eventually I learned how to delegate and do well. But I have some good news for you all because I think motivation is all we really need. How many of you need motivation? 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 I needed motivation. I needed my grandma in my corner. I needed someone to tell me to get my butt back upstairs and do it. I needed someone to do that. I wish today I still had grams around. I wish I had my grams around because I tell you what, I would do a lot more in life. I procrastinate less. I needed more. So for all of you that drop the three weeks of homework in the Facebook group by Friday, just, just a screenshot, a picture on your phone showing that you did your homework, that you do have it, you know, if you, as long as you show that you've done it, then we're going to give away gift cards. We're going to give away cold calling coaching sessions. I'm going to give some book, book giveaways. I'm going to go give away a full fledged coaching course during these 12 weeks. So I want you to collaborate and bring in that information, all right? I want you to do it. I've let people down over the course of so many months. I've let people down. You're gonna let people down, but we all need motivation, all of us. Every single one of us need motivation. We need something to push us to that next level. Not every client is going to be an ideal client. Not everyone. So right here is the Sales Corridor Kickstart Challenge Facebook group. First and foremost, week number one. Let's go back through and just let's do week number one so we know what we're doing. We need to find 250 leads and put them into some kind of Google Sheet or CRM. If we have it into a Google Sheet, we have to come up with the sales steps that work and that we're going to memorize and we're going to do so we can keep track of what gets measured, gets managed right? Week number two, we need to set up our email templates and take those 250 leads and start to between this week and next week. I'm sorry, last week and this week, please forgive me. We have to do the first liners of our 250 leads, meaning you need to look up your leads, find out something that's going on. If they're having container issues at the Port of LA, then talk about that saying, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how the, the supply chain issue is affecting your business, but I would love to help you in that area. Wherever you need to do, and then our very first subject line, which is called quick question, is the one that actually gets opened the most. So I definitely want you to open that the most. Then our homework is, if we're not going to set up a new domain, have really, really, this has happened to my clients where I wasn't even able to help clients because their domain was shut down or their domain was um, flagged as spam. 
and I couldn't work with them because if I, if I didn't use my software, then I had problems. I've had these problems. So if you do not want to set up a new domain that now forward or directs to your current domain, which is your, you know, your rllogistics.com or admin at blank, I need you to realize that I would not send more than 50 emails your first time and only add 25 each day more without ever sending more than 200 a day. Why do I say that? Because they will lock down your email. I don't know if you've ever had that happen. I've had it happen and it's not fun. When I had it happen, I could not get my domain back. They wouldn't let me have my domain back because once it's flagged, you're going to go into spam all the time with your clients anyway. So there's no sense in having a bad domain that is not set up properly. Make sure you're watching your Facebook group because I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do to add in some keywords in your DNS um, on your domain so that you do not get flagged to go into spam. As you're warming up, network with everyone around us so that we have an email address and you're warming up for two weeks. Craft your email signature and start writing your first liners for your 250. And then we're going to go into week number three which is our only homework is to memor to finish writing our first liners for our 250 leads. I still have about half of them still left to do. So I'm sure you're just, you're doing as well. And then drop your pitch, whether a voice pitch or a written pitch into our sales quarter Kickstarter. And next week on Monday, we will have a wheel, a wheel with everybody's name on it. That's done their homework. And I'll push a button boom, 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 and you will win gifts so we can stay motivated, right? Whether it's a book, cold calling sessions, and within the 12 weeks, every week, we will be giving it away as long as you do your homework. All right, everyone, I want to wish you all the best this week. I'm going to get off here today because I'm about ready to lose my voice. Know that I'm on your side. Um, I'm doing this right along with you, with, with someone. Um, so it is part of the plan. If you don't have a grandma to kick your butt to, to get upstairs, people have let you down, even if I've let you down. At the end of the day, the only pure person you can trust is yourself to get it done. So I will help you and motivate you, but who's going to do the work? Who's going to do the work? It's you, right? It's you that's going to do the work, right? So now that we are fresh, I've talked to two clients that had COVID over the last couple of weeks. I suffered with COVID and we're all healthy now. This is the best time to do it. We're going to get into this and we're going to make it happen. So if anybody does have any questions, please leave your questions now. I'll stay for a few minutes to answer any questions you may have. Um, Otherwise, I will see you inside. Well, we're already getting people. Yay. And remember, November 1st through the um, 5th, we are having a free. Um, <clears throat> yay. Yes. We're having a free webinar that talks about different streams of income in transportation. Um, I have helped a lot of businesses open up streams of income that have nothing to do with brokerage. And so that is going to be a Kickstarter challenge to try to kickstart some money into your company. Um, so that way you can continue to have revenue. Some of you in here for the first, you know, six months, your business was in and you were moving freight, you didn't even have a factoring company because you were able to use funds that you had saved. And so this is going to be a way of getting other streams of income. Um, and I'm going to show you how I grew a coaching business. And a lot of times I messed up along the way, right? But I'm going to show you how I did it and what I did and how I was able to make um, a little over $100,000 in, in nine months. And so I want to show you how I did that. So along with how to be a carrier compliance manager, et cetera. So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to wait for just a little bit. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to practice about stop talking. Absolutely. All 
All right. I'll wait a little bit. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Jakisha. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, Monica. Have a good evening. Thank you, Angela. Eric says, those who have closed, do we still need to pitch our onlyness? Um, I think it's just motivation, Eric, if you want to motivate others so that they can know how great you are. Um, I will drop the Bob electronically inside of our Facebook group in just a few minutes, Joe Casta. If you don't have Facebook, you can email me and I can send it to you as well. All right, everyone, thank you so much. If you have clothes, I am recommending, Eric, that we do one-liners for our very first email and that we do the very first email as a one-liner and then our subsequent emails on our email marketing can now be email marketing. But our very first email needs to be one-liners. Yes, Eric, whether you're using Close or Apollo, I'm using Apollo. Um, I've used Close as well, and I'm using them. I'm doing my one-liners first because it is worth it to make it personalized. Good night, everyone. I'll talk to you later.